going to be doing something a little different today. I'm going to be working on Noelle May. I had a shift, inner shift shaft is starting to wear out and I've got a little bit of rattle. I'll show you a little bit. Now I've kind of steered away from doing repair type videos and stuff, but I think I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. See what you guys think. It's a pretty simple fix. So I'm going to take you along with me. We're going to fix this shift shaft and uh, see if we can get rid of this jingle. So let's take a look at the symptoms that I'm having. Um, so again, you might be having it, and the last thing you want is your shift shift your shift shaft to give out on you when you're on the road somewhere. All right, so what I'm having happen here is if you look, there's a lot of slop in there. And there's a shaft that runs through here from your heel toe kicker over here to this shift assembly that hits this shift rod that goes back here to your transmission. So from everything all the research I've done online is this shaft is worn out. It's pretty common on uh, this year's 2016 Ultra. So we're going to replace this shaft. Now to do this, there's some simple tools you're going to need for your shift levers. You're going to need a quarter inch Allen head. Um, on this inner shift lever, it is a 3 16 and it's back behind here. I'm going to show you an easy way to get to it. You're going to have to remove the shift rod from this lever. There's two. There's a there's a nut inside on the inside and a nut on the outside. The one on the inside is a 7 16 so We'll just hold that and we'll break it free with a half inch back here on the back side. So I'm just going to pretty much just put the camper down, remove all this stuff. We'll pull the shaft out now. Let me show you the replacement part. So the replacement part for this, um, I ordered it from JMP Cycles. Um, it was less than ten dollars. Um, it's Biker's Choice, and it's just a shaft here. I'm sitting here holding my phone like an idiot. I guess what happens over time is the metal starts to wear out, and you get the play. So, like I said, we're going to remove the bolts. We're going to remove the old shaft, slide this one into place, and button it back up. Um, and that's pretty much it. Pretty simple process. All right, we're going to start by breaking the shift rod linkage from this inner shift lever using a 7 16 for the inner bolt and a half inch for the outer bolt. One thing I discovered after I removed this shift rod here, it's best to keep it in place um, to hold the whole assembly while you're removing the, the heel toe shifter. So I went ahead and just slid back through and loosely put the nut on the back. So we're going to take our, our ratchet with our quarter inch Allen head, go underneath the floorboard to this bottom of the heel shifter to go ahead and remove the bolt, and then on the top, remove the toe shifter. Now that we've got the heel and toe shifter removed, we'll go ahead and uh, take this nut off here and remove the shift linkage. Now I've mentioned an easy way to get this shift linkage off is now we've got this bar off, flip this around this way, and now you can access this bolt back here a lot easier. So we'll shift over to our smaller Allen key. Now 
when you remove it, there is a rubber washer here that goes in between there. So we make sure we want to reuse that again. And we'll do a side by side. Make sure they both look the same. And they do. So we're going to go ahead and slide the new one in and put it back together. All right, so we got everything disassembled here. And one thing I did while I had it apart, all these threaded surfaces were a little gummy. And so I took some uh, brake cleaner and a soft bristled uh, brass brush, cleaned up all the threads, because um, I think it's a little out of road grime and heat and stuff. So anything that was threaded inside of all the shink shift uh, things, threads and stuff, cleaned it all up, got the gum out. Um, I'll also be taking and putting a little bit of anti-seize along this new shaft and threads just to keep things from, from binding up. It was a little tough getting it apart. They were binding a little bit. It's just because of years of road grime and stuff. And of course, because this is a Harley Davidson personal massager, um, everything will get a little blue Loctite on the threads when I button it all back up. So we're going to put the camera back down and we'll button this all back together and hopefully it fixes our problem. One thing I forgot to mention, when we put this back together and we slide this inner shift linkage on here, we put it on this new shaft once it's through the housing. On this back side here, hopefully you can see that, we want the end of it just to barely pass that. Now the key is, is there's a groove on this shaft right there and that groove is for the bolt to line up on. So you can see in there, lays right in there so that's your alignment when you get it back together it's very crucial you get it back and aligns so just a little bit past it is where it's at if you look down in the hole which I don't know if you can see you can see that it's lined up with that little groove and then the same on this end everything needs to be lined up with the groove the bolt wants to be right there So now that we've got the rear shift lever attached, we're going to go ahead and put this shift rod back in place. Loose finger tied it for right now until we get the heel toe shifter back on. Now, your heel toe shifter, you want to leave yourself plenty of space between. You want to make sure you got plenty of clearance when you shift. Now you may have to go back and readjust these. Cut the screw out. The key is you want to make sure you're not hitting the floorboard when you push it down. And we're going to line the screw up with the groove again inside there. Loctite on. Just finger tied it for right now. So we get the heel shifter on. And the same thing here. We want our heel shifter. Make sure there's plenty of clearance. So that looks a little high to me. We got one more. There. Like I said, I may have to go back and readjust these until I get used to the feel. Get a little lock type. And this one comes up through the bottom.
so got everything buttoned back up and it looks like I might have fixed the problem so very little play in there so I think I got rid of the jingle so like I said um, it is a little finicky especially this top one so the lesson I learned was um, go ahead and break it free but then remove the hill toe shifter before you remove the shift linkage and then you can remove the shift linkage and lay this back it makes it easier to get a hold of that fold back there especially if you have lowers um, make sure everything goes back nice and tight I did have to loosen those up kind of squeeze this together and tighten that back bolt up a little bit but all in all pretty easy and very little to no play so I think the jingle will go away. We'll take it for a ride. I'll make sure my heel toe um, is where I like it. But pretty easy process. So that's it. Um, like I said, pretty easy replacement. Uh, key takeaways, I always like to use a little anti-seize on anything like that. Um, your blue Loctite on all your nuts. I didn't really go to torque specs, but with the Loctite, I feel pretty comfortable with it. I mean, you can look up your torque specs. And again, my disclaimer here is I'm not a mechanic. Uh, just kind of looked at it. I watched another video online figured you know I can do that and for a $10 part You know, we'll give it a shot now There is one other thing that there could be a problem that housing on the bike. It does have an insert I think I saw a video somewhere on YouTube where that insert might be worn out And if that's the case, there's a kit you can buy to punch that insert out and put a new You know sleeve in there because that might be worn out. But for me, I think it was the shift rod or that inner, what's it called again, uh, shift shaft. So $10 part, we'll see how long it lasts, but it's a pretty easy fix. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I learned something. I love working on my own bike. I uh, hope this encourages you to get out and work on your own bike. Um, something like that. About a, maybe an hour worth of work. Cost you a little bit of coin at the dealer or at your local shop. So pretty easy fix for the $10 part. With that said, that's it for this video. We'll talk to you guys later. In the meantime, you guys be careful. You guys be safe. Always keep your shiny side up and we'll talk to you next time.